checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. And uh, he's the champ. And barely took any bumps. The smartest guy in that match. <laughs> but a we, heel. We had Mercedes and Stephanie Vacure for the TBS title and the New Japan Strong Women's title. Thought Stephanie looked great in this match. Yeah. I thought Mercedes was, was uh, pretty good, but I thought Stephanie was the real star of this match. The fans... I guess, so the way it was, and I don't know what each individual fan is thinking in the building, but apparently there was a guy in a Celtics jersey. Oh. The fans got mad at him. So they start doing an anti-Celtics chant. And then I think they started to figure out, wait a second. Mercedes is from Boston. And so about halfway through this match, they totally turned, like it was 50-50. Like, they chanted CEO at the beginning, and they're, like, going, you know, dueling chants or whatever. Halfway through this match, they all just decided, we hate this woman. She's from Boston! And so they got totally behind Stephanie. They're booing Mercedes out of the building. And, Good. of course, Mercedes gets the win. She gets the title. And then, yes, they hit the music, and Britt Baker is back! And she had a stare down with... Uh, with Mercedes, Mercedes win the ring, and Brits on the ramp, place going nuts, and that looks like a Wembley match. Also right there. good, and I like Brit coming back as a baby face. People are saying, "Well, what about what Jamie H Jamie Hater comes back? Jamie Hater and Tony Storm if Hater's back in time for Wembley would be awesome." So I'm great with Baker coming back and going in this direction with Monet, who should be a heel. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Yeah. Well, what did you think of this Moxley-Naito match? Me? I thought it stunk. Mm. What can you say? Naito is uh, he's broken down and old, and this was a great reminder of this show, if you have any interest in Japanese wrestling, that New Japan... During this year, by the time we get to the Tokyo Dome and Wrestle Dynasty, that back-to-back -back shows that are now going to be taking place, they need to elevate younger guys. They need to make sure Hikaleo not only is the never champion, but he gets some wins and he's in a better position and better than where he was at the end of the year. Yoda Suji, just kind of treading water right now, needs to have a big G1. Their young guys need to break out because... Tanahashi, it's over. Tomohiro Ishii, I think he makes his way into the G1, but the reality of the situation is he is a shell of what he was. Did you say Night Hikaleo, by the way? I'm sorry, not Hikaleo, Hanare. Okay. Hanare. I don't think they're going to be doing much with Hikaleo. They are not going to be doing much. No. They didn't do much with Hikaleo, and I think they should have done more with him, to, to be honest with you, but... You know, they really need to elevate guys because Naito's done, and he, you need to have not only his replacement ready, whether that's Yoda Suji or Shota Umino, but you need to have those two guys and their opponents ready. You need to figure out better things to do with Ren Narita and House of Torture. You need to figure out what you're going to do with Gabe Kidd. Figure out exactly what you're going to do with David Finley, who was nowhere to be seen on this, the leader of the Bullet Club, an English-speaking guy. Maybe his foot's out the door to go somewhere else. I don't know. But they really need to get their young pieces in place because it's over. I'm sorry for Tetsuya Naito. And maybe he can pull out another big, great match at the Tokyo Dome where he goes and ends up dropping this title. But it's got to be, to me, sooner rather than later. And that was the biggest shining thing in this match. People are going to throw it on Moxley. How? I don't think anyone's throwing it on Moxley. If they try to, how? Again, you may not love how Moxley wrestles or any of that sort of stuff. And that's there are fair things to say about Moxley matches when it comes to criticisms of him. But in this match, it was no one other than Naito. And you want to talk about a guy that, I'm sorry, you know, you try to tell people how great he was. You have to literally sit them down and show them matches now from a long time ago. For them to actually believe you and believe that Naito was once as dynamic and as great of a wrestler as he used to be. I mean, I thought the match was all right. I didn't think it was. Oh, will you it was, stop? It was fine. I mean, not listen. Naito By looked, their standards. Naito looked terrible. Moxie did everything in his power to try to have a good match. I mean, there was stuff at the end where, like, they had a spot where clearly Naito was supposed to go for a Destino. And he just grabbed the arm and froze. 
And you could see Moxley was like, time stood still. And then he just looked at the guy and he just kneed him in the gut. And then, you know, they did a spot or whatever. And then there was supposed to be a reversal into a Destino. And Mox did all the work himself. Like, yeah. I, I can't I can't fault the guy. He tried so hard. And then they hit another one and, and he got the pin. It wasn't to the level, level of Okada power bombing himself against Tenru, but it was on that path. I mean, it's just, he was, it was something else. And it was, again, not sad to see, you know, there are plenty of things that are sadder, but it's like, it just. Naito's in the G1. Yeah. Good God. Yeah. See, I, I, when, when, when Moxie first won the title, you know, I should have immediately figured it out. Like, okay, he wins it from Naito in America. And then, you know, Naito wins it back in America at Forbindor. But, like, I, I just thought, you know, maybe they're going to, like, have a fairly long... There's, like, a lot of things Moxley could do as IWGP champion. And then they announced the G1, and he wasn't in it. And then, you know, people were like, well, it's happened before, years, oh, and, years no. and years and years and years and years ago. And then the real one was when, uh, when Naito did an interview over the weekend, and he goes, if Moxley wins, I'll give him my shot in the G... My spot in the G1. And I remember we were interviewing Tony... And, you know, Tony Khan's talking about, we have Moxley all summer, you know, he's not the G1, which has happened before. And, uh, I don't know, I probably made him mad, but I said, you know, Naito said that if, if, if Moxley wins, he'll give him his, his spot. And Tony was like, well, you know, we'd have to figure that out if that, if that happened. I was like, oh, I think I'm going to spoil that match. <laughs> I didn't think about it until that exact moment. I was like, yeah, Naito's probably winning it back here, man. Yeah. So many matches Moxie could add as champion against so many guys. Yeah, but if you look at it from and, a Japanese point of view and perspective, if he's not having those matches and doing that stuff in Japan, what is it worth? You know, you already have a storyline you are kind of playing, which is, you know, he's the foreigner who has taken the belt away from, you know, New Japan and Tanahashi's regrowth of New Japan and all that sort of stuff that plays into their new company motto and and how they're what they're trying to do moving forward so you know that's the biggest problem with moxley with that belt and again you know i was fine with him having it but it's just i kind of wish now really in hindsight it was somebody other than naito that he was dropping that belt to you know why couldn't you have built up yoda suji to be the person to do that and then naito's got to battle one of his own guys in lij there to me are other stories you could have told or can tell that are more intriguing with that title and the main event will osray and swerve strickland aw title amazing match i mean will osray is always incredible but this was swerve's greatest performance ever in aw it was the most he's ever been in the face of the company top guy champion i mean i thought he came out of this looking absolutely incredible and it was a, I mean, it was a clean win. There were some, some shenanigans at the end where uh, Don Callis tried to have uh, Osprey use a screwdriver and Osprey couldn't bring himself to do it. And my only issue with this otherwise awesome match was Osprey then went in the ring and he was full of glee to hit the Tiger Driver on Swerve. And I thought the entire story was he was so remorseful about hurting Daniel Bryan, that he was never going to use the move again. And I figured we would have months of, like, you know, losing the big one because he kept not being able to bring himself to use the Tiger Driver. And then, of course, eventually down the road, he does use it and wins. But, I mean, he got in the ring, and he hooked that guy, and he just screamed, Tiger Driver! He was all excited. And then it got countered, and Swerve hit a bunch of moves and pinned him. So I'm not sure what the story is anymore. I thought I knew the story, but I, I don't anymore. And it wasn't like Callus cost... Will Ospreay the match? He didn't. You know, they could have ton of, told a story there that leads to Ospreay and Callis splitting. Well, I think they they maybe didn't make that crystal clear, but I think they did absolutely. Because you can say it played into the loss, the distraction, him going out there. Frankly, Ospreay way oversold the moments with the screwdriver as if he had a piece of jagged glass in his hand he was about to stab Nana with, going back and forth with it. I thought that was a little bit too much. But uh, to me, that is going to be one of the first things that Osprey says to Don Callis on Wednesday or whenever they decide to put those two back in the, the ring with each other. But I'm ready for that aspect of things to be over with as far as you know, 
Cal is being associated with him at all. And then you can move now to Osprey and whoever it is and him trying to rebuild himself back and trying to find who he is if you're going into a match for with him for the world title at Wembley, whatever they decide to do. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.